guys, it's Glenn from Glenn'sCarCollection.com and today we're driving one of my favorite cars, the new Lotus Sephora 400. All right guys, so here's the interior of the Lotus. So to start it, we put the key in, and forgive the shakiness here. Uh, we put the key in, we turn it, and then we hit this race start button, which is located right here. So at first that threw me off because I assumed that the button would be near the key, but it's actually on the left side. Here we have our instrumentation. We have speedometer, tachometer, we have tire pressures, and in the middle right here where my finger is, is a little tiny digital uh, speedometer, which is hard to uh, see on the camera here, but it actually works well, as long as you put the steering wheel high enough that you could uh, see it. Then here we have uh, temperature and the time, how many mileage. This car is just under 4,000 miles. And here we have some buttons. This is your sport button, your heated seats. Race mode that takes off all the electronic nannies you have to hold down and you have to press for two seconds. Your hazards, your lock, your sport exhaust, and your other heated seats. You have the stereo, air conditioning controls, and a six-speed shifter. And the steering wheel is great as well. It's much improved over the, uh, the first uh, Exegis. And then you have some air conditioning. The air conditioning works good. I didn't believe that it worked that well this morning, but now actually that it's been running, it runs well. So I just don't think we had it in the highest setting. And then you have your regular controls, directionals, wipers. And then your lights and mirror controls on the side. A fuel tank on the side here and opening the trunk button down here where my fingers are. And that is the interior of the Lotus of Oil. All right, guys, and we're off in the uh, new Lotus of Oil 400. It was a cold October day. Uh, sun's coming out, so this is a great time for a drive. Now, well, roads are a little bumpy here, so forgive us. And it is a sports car. I did get to drive, you've heard probably in other vlogs or videos. Here's a nice turn. Let's take this turn first, forget talking. Oh wow, the handling mid-engine cars are just the best. Whoa. <laughs> oh my god. Now you have a 7,000 RPM red line, a 3.5 liter supercharged V6, comes out of a uh, Toyota Camry, but with a Lotus uh, tune, and it produces, wow, the steering is so sharp to turn it, wow. And it's so direct. Uh, 400 horsepower, 301, 302 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, but this car is not about torque. It's about uh, handling. Now, the old Evora was a great car, but it was a little unfinished. And uh, let's see if Lotus did it right with the 400. At the end of the video, we'll compare it to Porsche and see which is uh, the best car for you. Wow. Well, <laughs> based on the turns, <laughs> this car is a winner already. Uh, zero to 60 in about 4.1 seconds. This is a manual transmission car. Most of Voras are sold with a torque converter automatic, just like the first gen of Vora. Now, it might just be my seating position, but when I push the clutch all the way down, it's pretty far away. Uh, it's kind of like deep in the footwell. Whoops, we got police up here, so we will slow down. They're like, you know, we've been looking for this orange lotus all day, and we don't know <laughs> where it might be. Maybe if we just go on the road and wait for the guy, he'll come to us. Manual Lotus Vores have a limited slip a differential. Lotus was not that big on limited slips. When I had, I used to own an Exige a 2007 that you've probably seen in some other videos. And Lotus always preferred not to do limited slip dips. Uh, because they thought it compromised the handling at high speeds. Now, as an autocrosser, I love limited slip diffs, and here on the uh, Avora 400, uh, you have one. 
Now, pricing for these cars are about what, a hundred thousand or so? About oh, hundred. Yeah. Started ninety. Started ninety, and then with options about a hundred. Now, can you get these cars? Uh, can you get a discount on these cars, or they're still new that you're probably paying close to sticker? Yeah. So for the leftover in stock from last year, the get a good 15 to 20 percent discount oh really it's it's leftover scary. cars but i noticed most of the leftover cars are always the automatics it's very hard to find a stick right if you want right. a torque converter automatic and the automatic i haven't driven in the 400 but i've driven in the Vora s and if you like automatics uh it's a very good automatic it's that uh, zf uh automatic transmission and it's for an automatic it's really good it's a torque converter automatic but it, it does really good on the upshifts downshifts of course won't be as quick as a uh, dual clutch transmission but get the manual now the steering wheel is the steering wheel adjustable it is right okay. uh, i think it goes up and down. yeah so the steering wheel you can see your speed between the tachometer and the speedometer you can see a little bit of uh, uh you can see a digital reading of your speedometer now there's no this is a real driver's car so you have to heel toe shift for yourself it doesn't do it automatically like porsche's or my bmw m2 but this car lives for the turns and now we have some power for the straight whoa whoa <laughs> oh my god jesus <laughs> wow we'll slow down <laughs> nothing's better than a mid-engine car i had a cayman s an exiges nsx and once you have mid-engine cars i don't think you can go back so that's certainly an appeal depends on what you compare this car to. Do you compare it to a Cayman S because it's mid-engine or uh, really a 911, but that's a, a rear-engine car. Now this car feels like I'm in something special. It feels like almost something like I'm in a race car. You know, if you buy a Porsche, uh, the suspension is gonna be smoother. Uh, you know, reliability is probably gonna be better build quality, but everybody has a Porsche. There's a million of them. I don't think they really turn heads anymore. To me, the new 911 or even the Cayman S is like a grand tour, and it's really more to me of an everyday car than a weekend car. The weekend cars would be your GT3s, your GT3 RSs, GT2 RSs. Maybe you can make a case for the turbos, but you know, they're really good daily drivers as well. Now, here we're going way over the speed limit, but it doesn't feel like we are, right? <laughs> now, it's a six speed manual transmission. The throws are really nice and tight. I never liked the, the Lotus shift knob. That's the same shift knob I had in the Exige, but I can tell you that the shifter's a lot better. Uh, the shifter in my Exige S was, uh, was garbage. The interior's a lot better here. You finally have a, uh, I don't know that it's, it's Porsche worthy, but it's a big step up over the, even over the Avora and the uh, Exige S. I drove the Avora when it first came out in 2010, and it kind of reminded me of the NSX, because it had that like 276 horsepower. The suspension is, is definitely stiff. Uh, you know, if you're used to, let's say you're used to riding a Porsche or BMW or Mercedes, uh, on these bumps here, you can see that the car is jerking uh, more than usual. But remember, this is uh, a sports car. So I would say the Evora S is a little more GT3 uh, when you're comparing to the Porsche line than say a Cayman S or a 911. Now this car feels like an event. You're probably not taking this car out to get a cup of coffee. You're gonna take this car out and drive it. This is not like a car you're probably gonna commute to work in. Uh, the build quality, I can tell you already, is much improved. You know, what hurts Lotus is dealers are spread out through, across the country, so they're not gonna be as close as, say, your Porsche dealer or BMW dealer if you got an M3 or an M4 or an M2. Uh, you know, the cars are gonna be expensive. They're gonna be a little more to service. But I think driving makes up for it. And if you go to your, if you care about, you know, your local cars and coffee and stuff, you're going to be a star if you show up in a, in a Vora 400. I guarantee there's not, uh, no other Avora is there. Now, what other cars did you consider uh, with the uh, with the Avora? Did you, uh, I know you had an NSX. What was it, a 95, 96? 95. 95, and then you have a 997 turbo convertible, right. which we did Simon's car on this channel. Yeah, you can really hear the, the noise in here. Yes. Again, it's a driver's car, so it's gonna be loud in here. Did you, 
consider any other cars or you were just uh well let's look i wanted something a little mm -hmm. more exotic looking you know coming from the nsx yep so i missed that i wanted something like that and someone some, some, something with the back seat so the back seat was a big driver for me right so now uh you yes. can fit uh you have a two or three year old that fits in that back seat whoops it's wet here so we'll go slow <laughs> yeah, I have a two and a half year old. I got a car, car seat for it, uh, for her, and she's, she's fine. And the seven year old loves it in the back. Great. Back oh, so even your seven year old can fit in there. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Now Lotus is a no cost <laughs> option if you want to delete that back seat and make it a two plus zero. Right. So this is a two plus two because you have the little back seats. Yep. Uh, which is standard. And again, uh, great. And it, and. Uh, this would be a two point, uh, you can get a 2.0 car. If you don't need the back seat, you just have a partial uh, shelf for luggage. Yeah, I mean, they will go on, you can just take them off. Oh, is that what it is, really? <laughs> Typical Lotus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it comes with a seat belt and all that stuff. So okay. It's hard to retrofit it. Okay, so it's so, better to get it and take it out. Yeah. It's better just to get with the two plus two. So where this car lives in the turns. Now, warranty on this car, what is it, three years, 36? Yeah. Okay. So uh, Porsche is gonna give you four years, 50,000 miles. Now the service, there's a, a service when you first get the car, like a thousand mile service or whatever, right. to tighten up the bolts and do the first oil change, I assume? Yep. Now we're gonna hit some water here, so we're gonna be careful. Uh, and then the service is basically annual, right? Yeah. You've already, or we're about to hit 4,000 miles, right? Yeah. So now, if you had any problems at all in the first 4,000 miles, anything you had to go back to the dealer for? My window on the driver's side had a rattle. So okay. I had to realign it. Yep. That's the only thing. Okay, that's not bad. Now, I almost bought a 2011 Evora S, and really I think the car got better in 2012, had a lot of improvements, right. and uh, that was one reason why I didn't buy the 11. It wasn't the rattles, but the, you know how the window seals up? You uh, you put the window all the way up, you close the door, and then it goes that last half an inch. Yeah. Well, the, the window kept breaking, and not breaking, but it wouldn't do the last half inch. <laughs> yeah, it would just go crazy like this, oh, really? and, the, yeah, and the dealer really couldn't fix it. And so I'm like, you know what, I, I bought a Cayman S instead. But I'm telling you, that I always thought that the Avora is out here with my Cayman S, and that says a lot. And I think they're at the, uh, I think the quality now has caught up. I think the, uh, the reliability has caught up. I think Lotus hasn't done the best job in the world with uh, marketing these cars, you know what I mean? Uh, the most, when you own a Lotus, the most common question you're gonna be asked is what kind of car is that? And when you say Lotus, they're gonna go, oh yeah, who makes that, right? <laughs> Nobody knows what it is, where uh, you know, everybody, you know, the Porsche's been around forever, so everybody recognizes it, and uh, it's easily identifiable. Yeah, I mean, Lotus has been around forever too. They just yeah. don't sell many cars. Yeah. They don't have money, you know. Right, they don't have enough money, they don't have enough, uh, probably enough to go into research development. Now this, uh, this will weigh less than your 911. This car uh, clocks in at 3,100 pounds. Yeah. So, it, and it does feel light. Like today's car, 3,100 pounds is really light. To give you an idea, my Lotus Exceed Jazz, because the supercharger adds a little weight over the Elise and, and the hardtop as well, clocked in at about 2,000 even. I think it was 2,027, so yeah, 2,027. Yeah, <laughs> and if you get an Elise with a soft top, it's like 19 something, 1980, wow. somewhere in that range. But uh, yeah, it is a uh, it is a great car for sure. Let's stay away from this dump truck. We got to go the opposite way he goes. All right, good. <laughs> I mean, the, the power delivery is so different compared to the turbo. Yeah, so this is very. That's a great point. This is very linear. Mm -hmm. The car is light, so it's a different feeling. Yeah, so everything is immediate. What I love best about my Lotus is there were no filters. So you hit the gas, it's immediate, it's not going, it doesn't feel like it's going to the ECU that's saying, oh, do you really want to accelerate now? And has all the traction control and all the nannies working against you. 
where you know the brakes immediate, the turn in is immediate. This must be a pretty fast steering ratio. You got big brakes, so you got 14 inch rotors in the front, 13 in the back, which I believe are an inch bigger than the formula, uh, yes. former uh, Vora S. You have a double wishbone suspension, like uh, old school, like a race car, rather than uh, McPherson. Uh, struts and that actually keeps the camber in the corners instead of losing camber in the corners uh, it actually keeps you and that's why uh, the turning is so uh, sharp and immediate clutch is easy clutch is nice and light though there's not that much space in the football here I have size 13 feet and the clutch feel yeah and the clutch feel it's easy for me to heel toe because my foot covers all three pedals so, yeah, so I can't like I don't heel toe like this. I actually roll my foot over, and that works for me. Yeah, awesome. but uh, the ride is you know sports car stiff. I'm gonna say it's stiffer than the Cayman S I had or a 911. We're in sport mode here, and sport mode dials back the nannies a little bit, and it gives uh, it opens our exhaust. So instead of the exhaust coming on at like four and five thousand RPM in, in the regular mode, in sport mode it, it gets loud right from the beginning. Yeah. So the good news is drive around sport all the time. If you're coming home at one in the morning then obviously take sport mode off. Yep. If you depress the race button and hold it for a couple seconds, then it takes all the nannies off, correct? Yep. And the car would learn as you track the car, uh, if you're in uh, race mode, it would learn how you drive and oh, really? all the stuff. So it would improve, um, it does a little bit of intervention. Oh, wow. this channel uh, we've reviewed a Lotus Exige S in 07 which uh, you know the whole time I drove that car because I love Lotuses and love British cars and uh, I was shaking my head you know how good it was I can't believe I let my car go you know I made a nice profit on my car because they went up in value but they're still going up in value and obviously if I kept it longer it would have been worth more money but uh, why I was shaking my head is uh, you know I lost that driving experience it's such a unique car I should have kept mine on the channel I believe it's a 2013 2014 was the last uh, year of the uh, old uh, the Avora what they call S model this is the 400 yeah and that was a great car that was a torque converter automatic but I mean it drove great uh, you know when you look online say on a cars.com or auto trader for Avora 400s or even Avora S's you really got to look at the pictures because even the ones that say six-speed manual aren't because you'll see the uh, the center console here and there's no stick shift there so that's the downside uh, to that and you can get great deals if you want the automatic I'm sure you could get 20,000 off sticker they blow the automatics out the door but the problem is the dealerships stock so many so little manual transmissions that it's hard to uh, get a good discount now when you went to the dealer, they had a, a several of these, right? Four. How many were manuals? I think two. I think oh, three okay. were manuals. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. And would somebody be able to, not asking you what you paid, but somebody could walk in there now and get probably a leftover 17 or 18 at a good price? Or 17, I guess? Yeah, I think they can try to get a 20% off. Yeah? Almost. Wow. So you could get a $100,000 car for 80? Yeah. Wow. Well, like I think you know, eighty-five with all the options. If yep. we get eighty-five thousand on the hundred and five, maybe. That's a lot of car because, like, I drove uh, a four S on this channel and it was fully loaded, but it didn't have like ceramics or anything. And I think the price was like one thirty-six, yeah. and that probably equals a fully loaded. Uh, now again, a four S was all-wheel drive, so that's like ten thousand dollars more in the S model. But I mean, this would be equivalent to a Carrera S model, and. Uh, yeah, you know, let's just say that would be a hundred and twenty-five thousand. If you can get this for eighty-five, ninety thousand yeah. fully loaded, that's a bargain, right? Yeah. And it's different. You know, the Porsches are great cars. I've owned three of them, and I'll probably own some more. But uh, you know, I think the Lotus, uh, you know, really stands out in a good way. 
Okay, now if it was my money, would I buy this or a Porsche? Well, let's talk about what Porsches it competes with. It uh, competes with the Cayman S because obviously that's a hardtop and mid-engine. And I think you can even make a case that it competes with the 911 because that's a 2 plus 2. Now, true, the Porsche will be more reliable, have a, have a better resale value, better fit and finish. How can a car with a Camry-based engine even beat a Porsche? Well, to me, it's all about most visceral driving experience. And one car wins hands down, and it's this car, the Lotus Evora 400. Make mine blue with a six-speed manual. Thanks again for watching, subscribing, liking this video, and sharing with your friends. And I will see you next time on Glenn's Car Collection.